Um, so I can first of all, um, my thanks to the organisers for inviting me to this uh, precious conference and giving me the opportunity to talk a little bit about yeah, um, the title, which you can't see up there, is uh, basically more or less the working title of um, thank you uh, the working title of my ongoing project, uh, which basically I have started more or less recently. And uh, it is about a work, uh, it, it go, it, yeah, it centers around a work um, authored by a um, uh, Andalusian scholar by the name of Abu Abbas ibn Muzayyin Ahmad ibn Umar ibn Ibrahim ibn Umar al Ansari al Qurtubi, who died in 656 um, Hijri or 1258. Um, his work is Al Ya'la, which I'll get to in a, in a, in a second, but first a few uh, short uh, information on his. Um, yeah, for himself, he is born in Kurtova. and Kurtova, he was a Maliki jurist and also an expert traditionist, Mutakallim al Faqir Suli. Um, he travelled to the Maghrib, to Kuta, uh, to the Nisan and Fest when he was around 22 years old in the year 600, or so 1203. And um, yeah, and he returned to Al Andalus sometime between 604 uh, to 607, or 1207 to 1210. And um, he left Al Andalus for the pilgrimage in 618, which he quotes uh, 1221 uh, CE, and he traveled to Tunis by ship. He arrived in Alexandria by foot after 30 days in the first week of the month of Rajab, 618. Um, why this is known so detailed is because he's uh, explaining this in, a, in another work of his, which I'll get to in a, in a moment, um, where I'll show it, and he is describing actually a very historic moment. Uh, he gets there to Alexandria um, just a few days, a week before the Battle of Mansoura in 618, which was during the Fifth Crusade, where um, the Muslims in Egypt, modern day Egypt, um, yeah, pushed back the, the forces, the crusade, crusading forces. And that's basically when he um, got there, and he, from there he went to the Hajj, to the pilgrimage, and then later he returned to Alexandria that year and he passed away in Alexandria in 656 or 1258. Uh, because we're talking about different uh, um, yeah, times, so I wanted to just give a short um, yeah, list of what happened actually in that century in Al-Andalus and, and Egypt. The al muhad Caliphate from 1121 to 1269. The Battle of Las Navas, the Tolosa, happened in Al-Andalus in 609, which I might go into detail about is this, um, about the authorship of uh, the Iyalam, the, the work that I want to talk about uh, in, in yeah, a bit more detail, uh, about its, the time of its authorship. So this was taken as an argument that it was written before 609, but uh, maybe afterwards we can talk about this more. The Fifth Crusade happened in 1217 to 1221, um, an important uh, uh, figure here, Al Malik al um, he, which who met uh, Francis of Assisi, um, during this time, then the death of Genghis Khan happened, the Sixth Crusade, Siege of Cordoba in 633, he had left already, um, so that's why he would say in his work, um, he would not say in his work, uh, when he talks about Cordoba, Adah Allah, um, so the Seventh Crusade, exactly, then again another battle of Mansoura in 647, uh, the political control of Egypt passed to the Mamluks in 648, and just at the year when he died, I'm sure he uh, did he experience this has happened in 1258 in, uh, in, in, in February, the end of the Abbasid Caliphate, and he died in November, so he has actually experienced that as well. Um, now to his extent works, uh, uh, one of them is, uh, which the edited ones, uh, and all of them are extend uh, the list here, the Talqis Sahih Muslim, a um, uh, yeah, summary of Sahih Muslim, Ikhtisar uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, Sheikh Gharibi, he uh, edited Kitab al-Mufhim li ma'ashkala min Tarkhis Sahih Muslim, which he wrote in Alexandria, uh, for sure, because there he mentions his trip, actually, from Al-Andalus to, uh, to Alexandria. Uh, this is where he's, uh, yeah, mentioning it. Kitab uh, al-Kitab Kesh al Qina, work on Tasawwuf, more or less, and then the work that I have brought with me here the latest edition Kitab Al I'lam Lima Fidin Masara Mil Fasat Wal Awham Wa Izhar Mahasim Din Islam Wa Isbat Muwat Lagina Muhammad um, rough translation a uh, book about the corruptions and uh, um, delusions of the religion of the Christians and the presentation of the merits of the religion of Islam and the uh, affirmation of the Prophethood of our Prophet. This work can be considered the largest 
apologetic and polemical text written in al Andalus after Ibn Hazm, who died in the 5th uh, century HG, around 540. And until around 1999, our time, 2000, this work was actually attributed to his uh, uh, student, uh, al Qurtubi al Mufassir, who died in 671, and also others. Um, the work survived in three manuscripts, uh, two in Istanbul, as you can see, manuscript 794, and then 814, and then one in Rabat, uh, MS Rabat 83. Uh, there have been several editions, I'm not going to list them all, but uh, there's a few important aspects here. Uh, Paul Devianis' dissertation, he um, used only manuscript 794 and a translation of two chapters, Buana Ma Ali, uh, similar in 1988. Then um, an important but problematic edition is the one by Asakai in 1980, he only used one. Um, uh, his is a full edition of the work, yeah. however, he only used one of the manuscripts, the 794. Then we have uh, Azam, uh, who edited the work as part of his dissertation in 1985, and he used all of them. However, also him, he actually used the work to the professor, uh, unfortunately. And I'll show from the last uh, manuscript in Amas Rabat, where actually it's very much uh, 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 mentioned who the author is. And then we have two partial translations by Bil Aid and Al Kalam Shaqawi, and then uh, and then the latest one is this one by Samir Qaturi, um, Dar Malikia 2020, and he, he uses all of the editions and um, shows how unfortunately mistaken um, the other full edition is, the one published by Al Saqa. Um, this is unfortunate because I'll get to that in a bit. First, I want to show. Uh, from, from the MS Rabat 83, uh, basically that section where it is mentioned who the author is. Um, basically, up there you can see what kind of firab. What kind of firab in the Awakhir Yawm al Khamis? Yeah, Awakhir Shah al Jamad al Awal Senet 1142. This is this 18th century in Jazeera uh, Jarba, uh, North Africa. Wamma al Firab min Nusukh Aslihi, Sadah wa Sadis Yawm bin Sha'ban Senet 7. 26 دمشق المحروسة ووجدت على الأصل المنتسخ منه ما صورته قرأت على الإمام العالم الزاهد مصنف رضي الله عنه بتاريخ مفتتح عام 626. Basically, this was uh, this is a reference to when it was copied in 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 Alexandria. But now uh, وكتب العبد uh, الفقير الله أحمد بن يوسف السلاسي. So he is saying that uh, there's another note ووجدت على الأصل أيضا بلغة المقابلة بالمبيضة. So the original has been copied, um, basically. Walhamdulillah wahta wa dalik ala yadi al-faqir ila mawla. So the author himself is speaking. Wa dalik ala yadi al-faqir ila mawla al ghani bihi Ahmad ibn Umar. Not al Qurtubi, al Qurtubi. The name is not mentioned here, but it is Ahmad ibn Umar al Qurtubi. Fi al Ashr al-Awwal, in Muharram Sanad six seventeen, which happened just one year before his departure from Al Andalus. Um, but quick detail on this, he probably wrote uh, the Iyalam also based on what uh, the editor uh, says in, in his introduction between 614 and 616, evidence maybe later. Um, yes. Um, the interesting thing about the Iyalam is that it is a response, uh, which I haven't mentioned maybe, uh, in the, yeah, up there I say this is a response, you can't see this, it's a response to a letter from Toledo. And um, there's much, um, yeah, uh, scholarship happened in the past few decades on this specific letter, which was, uh, which is only um, preserved in the Yalam. And there's much happened on it, and there was very much linguistic uh, and, and philologic uh, studies on the work, uh, which I want to show here quick. Uh, the letter from Toledo, as narrated, is entitled "Tathit al Wahdaniyah," traveling the oneness. And um, yeah, where he's, uh, if you put it together, which has been also translated, I'll, I'll, I'll mention this in a second. Um, the text itself, uh, there are quotations that mainly deal with the Trinity, the hypostasis, and, and the union. Um, the response, uh, however, of Al Qurtubi himself has attracted only little interest so far. And there are some studies, as I said, on the Alam that have focused on the Christian letter from Toledo and other Arab Christian fact and treatises preserved in the Alam. And there are around 10 that he is actually quoting from. Uh, but the main one that he's 
uh, partially uh, quoting and responding to is, is this Tathif al and uh, the, main author, uh, the main author who has started basically this scholarship more, in more detail. Also, Van Kunisveld uh, mentions this work, however, Thomas Berman in his work in 1994, he basically more or less started uh, um, in, in, a, in a chapter, it wasn't the main part of his scholarship, or of his book, but uh, it was um, a, an important part where he was using it to compare to other works, uh, the Tafid uh, al He started this, more or less, uh, the scholarship on this, and he has a few articles after that. Uh, Thomas Berman, as you can see, and Jason Busich, Busich in 2018, Paul Deliyah, in, in his dissertation, he is doing a translation, and then uh, he also, um, Paul Deliyah also, uh, did a critical edition of the, 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 the Christian text, Tathir al-Hadaniya, also only based on, on one manuscript. Uh, Monfela uh, Salaf Juan Pedro, uh, in 2016, he made, uh, uh, basically, yeah, edited all the Arabic, uh, the Christian Arabic text preserved in the Iyalam using the uh, MS Rabat uh, that I showed you. Um, then Daniel Potast, uh, he wrote a dissertation and published in 2014 where he is uh, dedicating one chapter to the Tathith Wahdani and a little bit on um, the alarm itself, the response, a little bit of a summary. Uh, Tim Takenburg Thiessen, uh, the unfortunate thing here is um, many of the works that have dealt with the Tathith uh, go into very much detail um, uh, compared with the Latin text. However, um, the problem is that they all use, unfortunately, the faulty edition of uh, As-Saqa and um, not mention, although it had been uh, published, uh, uh, more uh, advanced and, and, and editions, the partial ones in particular, uh, which had also, also used the uh, MS Rabat, um, just as a side note on this. Now, um, yeah, before I conclude exactly, I want to actually show you and do I have some more minutes? Sure, you oh. have 10 more minutes. All right, um, just talk a little bit about or show you two uh, extracts from, from the response itself. And um, I mentioned that between 2020, but this, this is from this edition. And um, what happens here in this first, um, yeah, knuckle is that I um, used. Um, um, yeah, the sentence, how it's structured is, so he started with a lot of his statement, so first he had, uh, of course we had uh, a good portion of the Tathith, he uh, quoted it, and then afterwards, <coughs> excuse me, um, what he does is he's using portions of it, and then uh, responding. So I chose this one to show you a little bit of, to show you a little bit of how uh, his, um, way of dealing with it is, and also some portions where we can see, or uh, for, for what is for me interesting is this, this kind of theology, let's say, and um, what I would like to further um, pursue in, 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 in my dissertation. So, uh, as for a statement, while neither grasping his essence nor understanding any part of it, so he's quoting. With the thief, and he's saying uh, in, a, in a somewhat polemical way, yeah, you, that, that's the only time where you actually said the truth. So he's saying, upon my life, for you said the truth. Uh, you spoke about the one you worship whom you are ignorant about. What is this compared with your statement? Uh, the troubling of the oneness in knowing God. Um, that's my unfortunate uh, uh, note there. Um, yes, and then from there you claim that you wrote this book as a means to know Allah. Then the soul did not return, or then you did not return the soul. Until you admitted, conceded your ignorance about Allah. It refers to the statement, one neither grasping his essence nor understanding any part of it. So, um, does the contradictory nature of your beliefs that appear on your tongue and your right and understanding for Tabidi? Allah does what He wishes with the ignorant and prattler. Um, yes. And then it continues. How can anyone know anything about Allah without knowing anything about His essence? Okay, for Ya'rif Allah man lam yaqif ala ma'rifat dhatihi and His attributes. Wala alima shaytan min sifatihi. 
Um, let me just read this out first and then we'll get back to the sentence. The essence of Allah is equivalent to his existence, being. Since being existence possesses creation, uh, without being more, uh, according to what is known through clear proofs. Um, there he will have. Um, who does not know about the essence of Allah does not know his existence, doesn't know that he is actually existing. And who does not know his existence, that he is existing, is either in doubt or ignorant. Um, it is known that in Al-Andalus after not in, uh, um, Al-Baji, uh, the Al-Baji contemporary of, of Ibn Hazm, um, and uh, Eshari theology has, has uh, been introduced to Al-Andalus. And uh, I would have expected to see when I was reading um, his, his, his remarks that he would show uh, this side, basically. However, if you look at, in particular, that sentence I referred to earlier, how can anyone know anything about Allah without knowing anything about his essence? This is uh, nothing like Eshari or Matt Reedy, um theology, the way he's talking about the existence of Allah and about his that. It's more, uh, so far in my uh, um, little research that I've do, done so far, it's, it sounds more Muqtazili to me, and uh, which um, in the Andalusian context to me doesn't sound um, feasible, however, that's what he writes. And then uh, further research also, um, unfortunately, there is no research on, on his shah, the uh, uh, shah of Sayyid Muslim. So uh, also as part of my project, I would like to go into that and see uh, more about his views on, on this aspect. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, he traveled to North Africa. And at that time, uh, one Eshari, thank you, one Eshari theologian's um, work at Joaini, uh, the teacher of Imam al-Zali, uh, his works that he shared in particular were quite, um, from what I know, um, spread in, in, in that area in that time um, where, when uh, the Qurtubi lived. So uh, I would like to compare and, and see also um, whether I can see notions of, of grace, uh, um, yeah, uh, uh, of Duaini's views on, on, on this matter and whether there is any similarity. Which, for this specific uh, topic, I, 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 I can't. I see. I can't think that. I don't think that this is going to happen. But um, I would like to basically see how um, we can trace his views back, or uh, how how we can explain this kind of um, yeah wording. Uh, to me, it's as I said. I would have expected some more actually wording, however, or of view, which I did not see in here. Then to the second and last uh, excerpt. Um, why this is the text in total of the Tafsir uh, al so he's um, copying or um, uh, transmitting uh, a passage, uh, and then um, I want actually going to talk about the response. Um, the response. Uh, the second part is the response. How about this particular quote? Um, maybe for those who are interested in more in in the. Um, the the thesis itself or um, Christian uh, polemical or apologetic writings. Um, what I found in the Yerlam, in this newest edition, which I didn't find in, in terms of information in, in the previous ones or in the studies on um, the Tithlis, um, is that we can see here very close. Um, this, by the way, is a translation by Ken uh, from this specific uh, uh, paragraph. And when you look at the original, it shows that, uh, or it mentions, the editor Sam Katuri mentions that it's very similar to a uh, Oriental uh, historian um, Christian scholar by the name Ammar al-Basri. And um, I was curious, he's also mentioning the name, it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you in a second, uh, which I thought would be, uh, well, which I haven't seen like in this detail. I just uh, read from Thomas Berman and from Quintan Book himself in his work that uh, the thesis has similarities to uh, the work of Amal al-Basri. But um, what I did is I just 
um, showed to you here on this side, it's the satire edition, which I compared to the newest one. It was just easier to read um, that portion, basically, of the Tathlid. And then um, from Kitab al Masai al by al Basri, uh, just put it next to each other. Where, I mean, this um, information I got from the editor, and uh, it is remarkably yeah, similar. Um, as you can see, the uh, with the Tathlid, Qala fa in Sa'ad al min al Mukhalifin, it just it's more or less a copy paste in Sa'ad al min al Mukhalifin. There is slight differences, uh, but it, the gist is there. I would say 80 to 90 percent of it is just the uh, copied from, from, from that work. So, also for those interested in, in Oriental Christian um, uh, influences to, to Andalusi uh, Christians, this quote maybe, or this particular information that I found in, in the news edition might be very interesting. But then to the response, uh, yes, oops, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking yet, in a, in a minute. So, uh, then we say to this, so there's the part of the, the response that I didn't. Uh, Put in. Then we say to them, why did you arbitrarily decide on calling it criti um, the, yeah, sorry. He, here he is mentioning that uh, the creator is, is, is a Jawhar. And uh, if you're familiar with uh, the topic, um, Oriental or Christians, Arab, uh, Arabic Christians would, would use the term Jawhar, but not in, in the sense that the Muslim Mutakadimun would use it, which we'll uh, see how he's understanding it. Then, then we say to them, why did you arbitrarily decide on calling your creative substance? In which book of the prophets did you find this? Or who informed you about this? You will not find any argument for establishing this view except using arbitrary means. If you had shyness in front of Allah, you would not have called him by names that he has not given himself. If one of you had a child named without him, if one of you had a child named without him having a say in it, he would reject it and blame the one who named his child because it was not his right to do so. This was the case if it was a praiseworthy name. And imagine if it was a name, Latab, which conveyed the meaning of flaw and deficiency and naqs wal The word substance, wal jawab, according to the people of knowledge and the arbab in other, is only applied to something that occupies space. Innama yudlabunahu ala al which is the body that occupies a certain amount of space and it is necessary for it to have the accident of movement and rest. These two are signs of its changing and temporal nature. So um, he's adopting basically one form uh, uh, in the of, of, I mean, something that forms the base of atomistic thinking in, 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 in Kalam. Uh, there's many at atomistic views, which we can see here um, is that he's um, uh, referring to the atom in, 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 in ways which, um, not, not Jawha, he's using, uh, or, or sorry, not, not uh, he's, he's using Jawha to. For, for, for substance, but then he's not using jism, however he's using what we were a jism shahir qadran. So it's, it's a jism, not uh, as you would see in, in other words, uh, al, al uh, jism or al sam. And it is a shahir qadran min al-masaha, it is, uh, it occupies some certain amount of space until um, Abu, not Abu Hudayl, but uh, Abu Hashim al uh, it was understood that this atom, um, in that sense, did not uh, have any form or shape, or did not have this masaha, qadra min al masaha. So it's something he adopted from from later on. Abu Hashim al lived in the died in the in, in the fourth century, and uh, it has to have. So he's saying that this this atom has to have um, the, the uh, accidents of movement and rest. Uh, which is very essential to him. So my intention is now uh, to have a closer look at, at works um, that deal with this and, and many other issues that he is, uh, in terms of theology, uh, dealing with and um, see whether I can retrace these information or these, these certain uh, um, uh, theological views to uh, previous scholars and, and uh, see, 
compare it with maybe contemporary uh, contemporaries uh, of his time and um, see how I can um, what I can find about this. So I'm just in the beginning of uh, more or less my studies, and I hope that uh, I will have more to say maybe in a different conference. And um, that's why I would like to thank you for your patience and appreciate your uh, listening. Thank you. Thank you so much.